What's going on guys, Linus here and welcome to Crusader Kings 2. It is a game that I've been playing a lot for the past few weeks and um, I mean a lot of people have been asking me to make videos of this game and I mean I'm not that great at the game. I've only played for about 30 hours at this point and um, I mean this game is so complex. I barely know anything. I barely scratched the surface of what this game really is about but um, people ask me to do it in the same way I did save which is you know just start and just have fun with it and just take a look at the game. Um, I will say I'm terrible at this game. If you are a long-time Crusader Kings player, then do not watch this video. I swear to God, if I get, you know, comments saying like, Oh, you're doing it wrong. You should have done this. You you shouldn't be making videos. I played this game for only over 500 hours. You're a noob. I'm going to freaking block your ass because I know that. But people ask me to play it. And um, why not? It's fun to do. This is a let's play. It's not a walkthrough. I'm not giving you helpful tips or hints. I'm just going to play this. In my own way. So shut the fuck up. Anyway. Independent realm. So basically, for any of you that don't know, this is a grand strategy game. Um, I know some of you are going to say, oh, it's just like Civilization. Please don't say that to, to fans of this game. Like, if you ask me, I'm like, well, yeah, I guess you could sort of say that they're somewhat similar since you have a map. And that's it. There's a map. But, um... You can basically pick one of these uh, countries you see on the map. They're all divided. You can also play... Um, so, okay, let me just explain this. I'm terrible at explaining stuff. But, for example, if you want to play as England, you can uh, pick to play as King Harold I of England, uh, who was the king uh, on the 15th of September in 1066. Um, you can play as the King of France. And if you do that, it basically means that all these little counties are yours. You are the ruler. And all these people that, you know, um, maintain these counties are your vessels. And these are your vessels. You've got 12 of them. And um, you can play as a king if you want to. You can, you know, hold France as yours. You can also say, oh, I want to play as the, um, for example, the um, main. I want to play as the Count Robert. Robert. Of Robert of Maine or men, I don't even fucking know. But you can play as him if you want to, uh, which makes it way harder because this is then this is just your county. That's all you have. You just have this one little freaking. Oh, wait, actually, you have two. No way. You only have one county, and that's it. So it's actually very difficult to start out that way. It makes it more challenging, more fun. Uh, to do that, but you know, if you want to play the game uh, the first time, what I did is people uh, on on four chan suggested that I play as um, one of the earls of Ireland, which is they call it Bebby's first uh, Crusader Kings two game. So I decided to start out uh, as a count, actually start as Tyr Canal Earl Raid. I can't pronounce that shit, but I played as him, and I basically reunited all of Ireland as one. And I took some. I have some parts of England. Now, I can show you that if you want me to in a different video on my personal game that I'm playing right now. Uh, but I'm probably gonna play as a count first, just to uh, to have a bit of a challenge. Even though I'm terrible at this game, I'm playing on normal difficulty, which is more than difficulty enough. Basically, you can play pretty much any of, the, of these counties you see, uh, except theocracies like this one. Which, uh, I think this, that, that's the theocracy. This one as well. Uh, you can play as Muslims for some reason. This game is, is freaking uh, racist against pagans or pagans. I don't even know what that is. I think it's a special religion. Um, I'm not even sure. Uh, and Muslims. So I could, yeah, I could start out as him if I wanted to. But if you go over here, you're not allowed to start out as this guy, Sheikh Abdul Wahab. You can play as him. I mean, I think I played as um, Abyssinia before. You can play as like a... A kingdom, but you can't play as a count for some reason if he's Muslim, which is a bit weird, but whatever. Um, so I'll probably just play as a count. I'm going to pick a, a European count. I just have to figure out which one I feel like playing. Um, because there's all these different things going on. As you can see, there's some interesting characters. I mean, um, England is at war with uh, Normandy and Norway. Okay, so England is over here. And Norway is actually invading. They have this, uh, this is Norway. I think this, yeah, that's Norway, that's Norway, and that is Iceland. You can actually play as Iceland if you wanted to. Uh, that's totally cool. It's only two counties, but it, I guess it's cool to play as Iceland, isn't it? Um, let's see, that could work. What's the difficulty on this anyway? It's 80. I actually got a successful game when I started with a difficulty level of 80%. So I'm pretty happy with that. I actually broke up all of Scotland on my personal save. That was pretty funny. Um, Earl... Mm -mm -mm. So, um, like I was saying, you're at war as England. I think Fre uh, Duke William of Normandy. Where the fuck is Normandy anyway? 
Normandy. Isn't that France? Brittany. No, where's Normandy? What the fuck? I don't even know. I'm an idiot. Anyway. Normandy. Where the heck is it? I kind of want to know now since I already started talking about it. But anyway. Um, so you got some wars going on over here. You know, Ireland is all broken up. Scotland and England, you know, they have some conflicts. They're not at war at this point, but they, they will go to war, trust me. And Norway is at war with England, England and France. All sorts of things going on. You could play in Spain, but Spain is broken up. Uh, there's like invading Muslim hordes, as you can see. Um, whom you're not allowed to play as, as you can see right here. I can click him, but I can't play him. Not allowed to play Muslim. This game is racist as fuck. So, um... I'm actually not quite sure who we should start out. Holy crap, that would be... That'd be funny to play as this guy. Count Fast of Dull. That would be hilarious. I could do that just to start off. Um, let's see. Or him. But basically, it's more... like you, you can play as a king if you want to. You can start as the king of Norway. That's going to make it way easier for you. Um, but the problem is that it is way more challenging if you play as a count. And it's just more fun that way. Um, Estonia. Oh, that's pagan or pagan. I still don't know what that is. I'm going to pronounce a lot of things wrong. I hope you guys are okay with that. And if you're not, then I'm sorry, but whatever. Uh, ooh, Lepland. Oh, they're pagan. All this, what the fuck? Okay, I'm just going to place this little count guy. Um, where's there more like counts? Let me just take a look at this. Oh, there's all these little things going on. But if you play as Dell, you don't have a leash. You're like, you're just yourself. That's pretty funny. I'm going to play as that guy. I'm going to see if this will, you know, turn out to be anything. You know, first game is probably going to be a disaster. But I'm going to play as him and just start the game and see what is going on. And see if I can, you know, get my way and get more stuff. Okay, so first things first. This is my character. Count Fast of Dahl. I am 27 years old. My birthday is actually the 1st of January, which is pretty cool. Um, and this game is freaking complicated. The only title I have is the County of Dahl, which I already own. Um, and basically, because I'm unmarried, my uh, my court chaplain is my heir. So if I die, then he gets my title, and that's it. Then I'm just freaking done. Who's this? Uh... Okay, well, anyway, I'm screwed if I don't get married, so... First things first, I'm going to uh, pick an ambition. You get all these little pop-ups when there's things you can choose to do. I'm going to pick an ambition, which is, you know, something your character wants to do. I'm going to say I want to get married. And if I get married, I get 10 piety, which uh, you can see over here. Piety, prestige, and gold. And it's your domain, your um, realm, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, there you go. And your score. Yep, I want to get married. So I get 10 piety. If I do this, piety is basically how much, um, how good your... Uh, relationship with the church is uh, and that's an important thing prestige is you know how well known you are and obviously if you're a king you're going to get way more prestige than if you're a count but you know there's ways to get it and uh, gold is well it's 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 gold i mean are, are you stupid it's money um your domain size is the amount of counties that you own as you can see it says one out of five and also i suggest going full screen if you want to watch this you want to see what's going on at least set the player to big because otherwise you don't have any idea of what is going on um so yeah the only county i have is the county of Dal. it's just one county capital there's no temples or anything you can actually build a temple or a castle or a city which is, I mean, it's, it, this is a lot to process and explain. I understand that. But um, basically, um, your capital is always a, a castle. Uh, castles are feudal holdings that come with an associated barony. They are highly defensible and provide the highest quality levies. However, tax income is lower than from cities or temples. So um, you can have a lot of soldiers in their temple is if you want... Um, if you want money, but you have to be good friends with your chaplain or your, your uh, bishop there. Because if he likes you more than the Pope, then he'll pay you. Uh, and a city just gives you a lot of taxes. Now, and all this right now is, is a castle. And if you get 700 gold, which is a lot. Seriously, it's a lot. You can actually build a second holding. Uh, but that's not really here nor there for now. I don't I have zero vessels and I have eight people at my court. Only one of them doesn't like me for some reason. 
So, um, this is my character screen. I'm not married like I showed you before. I have an heir, my court chaplain. So if I die, he gets all my stuff, which would not be cool. He doesn't even have a claim on it. He's just lucky. Oh, and he's attractive for some reason. Um, and these are all my personal traits. So I'm a skilled tactician. I am wrathful, which means that I have a hot temper. I am humble, which get, gets me extra piety. I am paranoid, which gives me intrigue uh, skill. And I'm also kind, which means that people like me and that my diplomacy skill is uh, somewhat higher. So every character in this game has a unique set of skills. Now, as you can see, my character is terrible at learning, uh, which is, you know, what you need to be a, ch a court chaplain. But he's a great uh, marshal. Uh, yeah, marshal. He's got great martial skills. So he's, you know, a great warrior and all that. Um, so anyway, let's take a look at my council. Basically, um, in this game, you have a council of five people. You have a chancellor, a marshal, a steward, a spy master, and a court chaplain. Now, what a chancellor does is um, you're going to use him to improve your diplomatic relations with other places. You can fabricate a claim on a certain county or duchy, and you can sow dissent uh, between local nobles and their lieges. So basically, if you if you do that, you can um, you know make vassals dislike their liege, and if they really hate them, you can actually make them revolt, and there will be uh, you know rebels just uh, running amok, and then hopefully you can join in in the battle and take it over or something like that. Now, your marshal is sort of your general, I guess. He's in charge of the military. You can use him to suppress revolts in certain areas. If You know, if you're um, scared that, um, you know, rebels are going to revolt against you in a certain county, you can put him there and he'll, uh, you know, keep an eye on the rebels. You can, you can use him to train troops, which basically just makes sure that um, you can have more soldiers and that they're, uh, they're reinforced sooner. And you can have him research military tech. Now, your steward can collect taxes, which means that um, you're going to get more money from a certain county. You can oversee construction, like, for example, like I showed you, if you decide to upgrade something or if you decide to make a new holding and you have him there oversee construction, it's a lot faster. And also, he can research economy tech. Now, the spy master is very, very important. He can uncover plots for you. So, for, for example, my uh, since my heir is this dude, he could actually have a plot uh, in which he would, would like to assassinate me. Now, my spy master could find out about that and just say, Hey, dude, there's a plot. You need to stop that guy. And I could, you know, take action. I could imprison him, kill him before he kills me, that sort of stuff. You can also have him build a spy network anywhere if you want to, uh, which just improves your assassination chance in, in that county where he is. And he can study technology. Uh, last but not least, well, sort of least because he's pretty boring, is the court chaplain. He can head a local inquisition, which sort of... Um, converts people in a certain county to your religion. He can research cultural tech and he can improve religious relations with a bishop in a certain county. So that's the council. Uh, I'm just going to jump to the next thing. Laws. This is a whole big screen. It's very, um, I guess, confusing if you see this for the first time. Uh, basically, you can just control the amount of taxes and the amount of levies that you can ask of your, um, your vessels, cities, and churches. <coughs> That's the most important thing, and also there's laws that um, um, sort of, you know, just tell you um, who's going to inherit all your stuff. Succession laws, uh, where those are also pretty important. Right now we have a gavel kind law, which means, let's see, where is it, primogenitor. Uh, you get no if the ruler, ruler, ruler divided the titles of the ruler are divided among his children with the oldest getting the primary title if the ruler has no children who can inherit the law defaults to primogenitor which means that the oldest child of the ruler inherits all titles your successor will like the law but other members of your dynasty will slightly disapprove so there's all sorts of different things to keep an eye on there now this is just technology all sorts of different technologies that are being researched. You don't actually have to actively do this yourself, um, but they give bonuses. Like you, if you um, if your farming goes up a level, you get more castle tax. You know that sort of stuff. <clears throat> so if you get your um, your counselors to um, research tech, then you can get extra bonuses from that. Military, you can just use to um, raise personal levies, and you get some soldiers you can use to uh, to fight enemies. And you can also hire mercenaries here, which I'll talk about later probably. Um, they're pretty, you know, costly to hire, but they have these huge bands of men who you can use to fight. Very useful. Intrigue is where you can see your ambition or your plot. So you can, for example, if you're married, you can have a plot to kill your wife for some reason or another. And there's a bunch of decisions to make. You can invite people to your court. You can go on a grand hunt. 
You can buy indulgence for your sins, and there's all sorts of different special things that can pop up there. Uh, also, you can see your threats, which means um, uh, people that might revolt against you, any of your vassals, your prisoners, and known plots. Now, diplomacy is, you can just see me here, but for example, you can arrange marriage uh, with people. Um, what the heck? Oh, this is an imbecile. That's not good. Um, but you basically, you can uh, take uh, action against other people there. Uh, you can, you know, educate their child. You can arrange marriage and there's, you can declare war, you know, all that sort of stuff. Religion, you can just see um, that we're part of the Catholic Church and you can see the Pope and how much he likes you. Not that much, but I guess that's okay. Uh, vessel bishops. Well, I don't have any vessels right now, so I don't have any bishops. And uh, actually, it's just a character screen. You can search all characters if you want to, which is just an amazing list of characters. There's so many characters in one game. It's simply ridiculous. I mean, if you look at this little uh, ball, if I scroll, you barely see it moving. There's so many freaking characters. But you can just search your realm. And my realm is basically... Um, me and my court, if I'm not mistaken. So that's me and then the rest of my court, I think. Uh, but if you have, uh, you know, more counties, it's basically all of your counties and the people in it. So for now, it's not, you know, that much. But that's basically what that is. Now I um, get a pop-up saying that, you know, my, um, I'm fr going to freaking lose my county if I die now. I need an, I need an heir. Um, because in this game, you only follow one dynasty. Now my dynasty, I'm Count Fest... Gelta or something and um, this is the house Gelta. It's just me. I don't have any parents or whatever I'm the only person. I'm the only living member. I need to get kids or otherwise my uh, my line will die out and um, The game is over. This is not my dynastic heir So if I die now the game is literally over so I need to get kids to make up for that Now let's take a look at the uh, potential marriage candidates Now these are the people I can marry uh, there's a bunch of them. You can basically sort them if you want to. My uh, opinion, so how much they like or dislike you. Their rank, so uh, highest would be, you know, princesses and stuff. Uh, too bad I'm just a lowly count, so princesses are not really interested in me. You can search by name, so it starts with an A. It's just alphabetical order. Dynasty, same story. It starts with an A, B, blah, blah, blah. Uh, culture, which is, uh, these are the, Bre the Breton culture, but there's a bunch of different cultures, like Dutch. Uh, Frankish, there's so many of them. Uh, Swedish, it's not in there. Uh, Welsh, I mean, there's a bunch of different cultures. Realm, which is just the, uh, well, the realm that they're from, obviously. I mean, come on. Their age, which, I mean, if I really have to explain what that does, but okay. Um, starting with uh, one years old up to however old there is. The oldest right now is 39. Or you can sort by their skill, because basically if you get married to someone, then their skill will help you out a lot. So I'm going to take a look. Um, I need some more learning. So for me, it will pay off to marry someone who is into learning. Now, I'm just looking um, right now. So I sort of buy the highest amount of learning. Now, you can look at their, their traits and their age and stuff. That's all comes into play. Now, this one I like, because she's zealous, which is good. She's just. That's great. Temperate, that's a good thing. Charitable, that's great. And scholarly theologian. What well, that means that she's very great at learning. Why am I holding a pen? That's distracting. Uh, and she's also only 26 years old. And if I marry her, there will be an alliance with the Count Baudouin of Gins. I don't fucking know how to pronounce stuff. So I can, arrange, uh, I can uh, propose marriage and it will get me one prestige from marrying into that house. Um, so this is the Count, that's probably her father, uh, or brother or something, just, I, th I think it's her liege, I'm not quite sure, um, and basically I can, I can declare war on him if I have a valid reason, I can send him a gift of money, I can arrange a marriage, I can arrange a matrilineal man marriage, which means that the kids are going to be of the woman's, um, dynasty, I can arrange a betrothal, which means if, you know, he has, like, very young kids and are not up to marrying right yet, um, I can just be, you know, get betrothed to him, and then by the time they actually become 16 years old, I can get married to him. And I can educate their child, so basically they have one little kid, and I can say, hey, do you want him to be, um, you know, educated at my uh, court? And then it'll improve relations and stuff. And also the kid that gets educated gets some of the traits of his um, educational person. So that is that. It's uh, just, wow, a lot of explaining to do.
Um, I think that, yeah, she's the one I want to marry. It only gets me one prestige, which is not that much, but it'll forge an alliance between my house and his, and I'll get a wife with diplomacy. And I'll probably get kids, because she's pretty young. She's around the same age. I mean, I'm 27, she's 26. So there we go. No heir of my dynasty. We can remove that and that and that, because I just proposed. And that just means that we have to wait a little bit. Um, let's see. Yeah, there we go. I have, we have to wait a little bit. We already proposed. So they're now considering a marriage proposal. I need to unpause the game. Everything I just did was still on pause mode. This is the slowest mode. It's just crazy slow. I'm going to turn it up a little bit. 20. Come on. Is he going to get back? To oh, there we go. What the heck is this? I've decided to institute the limited crown authority law in the Kingdom of Sweden. Since this is a crown law and you're a formal elector of Sweden, you may vote, even though you're not my vassal yet. So, the King of Sweden wants to vote for some crap. And I can say, oh yeah, that's cool. Or, you know, get out. I'm going to say, okay. Because I, I want him to like me, even though it doesn't seem like it's going to work. Um... Anyway, here we go. Peace with you. I accept your suggestion. I count fast in the day I get married. So I'm officially married now. And if I go to my court, here she is. That's my wife. And if I look in the list, Adela Degins, that's my... I'm just hoping I'm saying that right. I'm going to say a lot of, you know, bad stuff. Uh, but I'm married to her. Um, I'm her husband now. She's got a claim on the county of, of Gins. So basically, if we get a kid together, then the kid will get the claim. And um, I actually start playing as that kid hopefully it's a son um and then i can actually take over another county if that's somewhere close i'm pretty sure it's not i don't even know where the heck that is but um i guess it's good to know so now we got married i basically get the choice count fast and adele i've got married we can collect a royal aid duty to pay for ceremonies so i can say yes it's everyone's concern that we're getting married and then you get you know a small amount of money at this point since um people don't have a lot of money we're, we're pretty poor or i can say no people respect wealth and then I get 50 prestige for that, which is good, because, I mean, it, I only get, like, 2 gold if I say yes, or 50 prestige, which is a lot, so I'm gonna go with that. And here we go. So I got married, so now it says, Count Fast Adele fulfilled the ambition to get married, which means that I get some piety, which is a good thing. So I can pick a new ambition, uh, there's a bunch of them to choose, so um, I'm just gonna say... You can say, you know, a plot to see my wife dead, which is not really what I want at this point, because she has, has to get me some kids. I can amass some wealth, which you need 500 gold for that. And uh, that's a lot at this point. Uh, if you do it, you get some stewardship, but it's not really worth it at this point. You can become a paragon of vir virtue. You need 500 piety for that, but, you know, you get a lot of extra piety and learning, and you get the nickname The Holy. It's really good, actually. Uh, or you can say, have a, have a son or have a daughter. My, my ambition is to have a son because I need a good heir. I'm pretty sure that the laws will not allow um, girls to maybe... Let's see. Only males. Okay, so now we actually can have our um, women can actually um, inherit titles, but only if there's no uh, you know el eligible son. So only if, if I get like six daughters, then... Um, you know, a daughter will actually get the claim on the county of Dahl. So, um, let's just hope that I actually get a son, because that would be nice. Let me just let me just sit right for a sec. So, um, that's that. We got that out of the way. A message, I want to have a son. That is absolutely correct. And now, thanks to my wife's excellent stewardship, I got a little bonus to... Um, of three actually, so I can actually uh, expand my domain. I, I could have up to seven uh, counties, which is not that much, but um, I could expand if I wanted to. Only problem being that, um, ooh, let's see. So I could, let's check this for a sec. Uh, independent, blah, 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 Stuart and Norway. So it seems I picked a really bad spot even. Yeah, I picked a, a horrible spot, but that's fine. Hmm, the Prince of Sweden. Okay, so I need to figure out a way soon. Oh, fuck. What the fuck did I do? Okay, I clicked the Wikipedia link. Great. Can I get back to the game? Can I get... Can I just get back to the game? Did I fuck up again? Okay, I fucked up. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back. I actually clicked on this little uh, thing over here. I can't click on it now because my character's not important. But um, everything is different this time around since um, I actually clicked on that and then the game basically 
alt tabbed out, I can get back into it and then save, so... I still count fast, but he's got different freaking skills now. It basically just gives you a random set of skills. My heir is a different person. My whole council is, is, is different. People like me more for some reason. Um, and I have a bunch of different traits this time around. I'm a skilled tactician. I'm wrathful. I have a bad temper. I'm kind. I'm brave. And I'm ambitious, which are uh, some good things. Now, as you can see, my court, um, my state learning is still terribly low. So I could do it with a... Uh, Someone who's good at learning, and I just looked at this, and I noticed that the only person I could find was a Nor Norwegian woman who is... Uh, she's got some okay, I guess, um, things. She, I mean, she's cynical, which I don't like. And she's gluttonous, which is bad. Um, but she's got some good at that. But I'm thinking um, of going with this, this little girl. Um, a German uh, woman. Because she's got some, some better things. Or this one... I think I like this one more. She's got some pretty good, you know, traits. She's Norman. I don't really care about that, but she's pretty young too, so um, she'll do, I guess. Here we go. We're not going to gain any prestige from this, but I'll just go with it and propose, and there we go again. So uh, this time around, I'm, I'm going to make sure that I will save. I'm actually going to do that right now. I was thinking about starting another uh, county, but I'm pretty sure that playing as Dahl is not too bad. It could be fun. I'm just going to need to find a way to actually take over pieces of Norway or or uh, Sweden without, you know, pissing people off. Because people are going to get really mad at me for doing that. I just know it. Uh, but I'll have to figure that out on my own. I'll just, I'm going to do my best to make this as fun as I can for you guys. So here, okay. So as you can see, on the first day of this game, literally the first day, because it starts on the 15th of September... The King of Sweden uh, announced war. He, he, he really wants Dahl, and he was like, Hey, you there with the face. I'm taking your stupid country. So, I mean, we have a bit of a problem since we have barely any money. I mean, there's nothing we can do to stop him. I can... Uh, here we go. Two, six, okay, let's go with prestige. So, um, I don't have any vassals. All I have is my personal levies, which is uh, 225 men, which is not nearly good enough to uh, get anywhere. So, um, basically, we're in a bit of a mess right now. There we go. I'm married. I have, a, I have a girlfriend. I mean, wife. Even better. It's pretty cool. And now my state learning has been upped somewhat. Now, here we go. He wants the uh, limited crown authority law in the kingdom of Sweden. I'm going to ignore that because I don't want him to change the law to his favor. But he's going to be uh, laying siege to my castle. And there's pretty much nothing I can do at all. Fuck you, Sweden. So, worst, you know, worst comes to worst. I'm at war with Sweden right now. He defeats me and I have to become his vessel. We'll see about that. I'm just going to speed this up because there's literally nothing I can do to stop him anyway. I'm pretty sure of that. His army just disappeared for some reason. Let's see if I can uh, offer him peace. Hey, do you want to be friends? Oh, uh, see, I can surrender and then he becomes my new liege, which is not that great. I prefer fighting over it. Can we fight over it, please? Okay, just attack me and stuff. Okay, so this guy's not married. I wish I had a daughter I could, you know, engage to him, but he's pretty old too. What the fuck? So this is actually the Count of Yemtland. Yemtland, I don't even know. Um, he's 46 years old. This is his 16-year-old son. Um, I mean, that's not 16 years old. Okay, that's not 60. Okay, whatever. Um, so I can invite him to my court, which he's not interested in. He likes me, but not too much. He doesn't have, really have a reason to move. I could engage him to someone. I could... Let's see if I want to see... Um, matrilineal marriage with uh, some woman. No. Uh, he's too high in the line of succession. So he actually realized that he's a pretty cool guy. He doesn't want to get married to, um, to someone who will have his kids... Uh, with her name then. That's bad. Oh, and now Dal is under siege. There's 800 men. Wow. That's bad. Attackers don't have a name. But um, that's 450 guys against the 856 of them. Which is... Um, we don't have any sort of chance whatsoever. We might as well give up, I suppose. But that would make it a bit too easy. I wish I just could hire these mercenaries. 
But um, I don't think we have much of a choice. We should probably start as a vessel of Sweden and then work our way up from there. This guy's going down anyway because he's sucky. And Lapland is... Oh, is that part of the same thing? Defense. Oh, here we go. Hunger Bites. Oh, defending troops take losses. That's great. So, man, we, we are pretty much lost anyway. I don't have any claims. What about my wife? Doesn't have any claims too. I mean, I'm pretty much screwed, but at least I can pr probably get some kids. I'm going to offer peace. Wow, there's just no point to this. I'm going to surrender. Dude, I'm surrendering to you. I will become. There we go. Accept your offer of peace. So here we go. Now we're officially part of... Uh,